Let me tell you what God showed me last night, uh, if I can. Before, right? I mean, I got, I was ready to I sit at my desk, and uh, Lisa usually comes back, gets ready for bed, and that's my cue to get up and uh, lay next to my wife. And I mean, I, I just fix it to stand up, and boom, God showed me something. Um, Judges chapter 3, I want you to open your Bibles there. I, um, oh, Lord, help me do this. I struggled last week with uh, this part of the scripture. I knew there was something there, and I wasn't, I wasn't seeing it. God wasn't giving it to me. And uh, I guess it wasn't time. But it was this deal about... <clears throat> it was this deal about God proving us. Boy, I'm going to have me a spell here in a minute. You said it, Trish. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them. You are Israel. You're the people that God picked. He selected. He called you. He did not call you because there's more Christians than there are lost people. This is uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 4, Deuteronomy 7, I think. He told Israel, he said, I did not call you because you were the greatest people. I did not call you because there was more of you than there was anybody else. <clears throat> he said, I... I I called you and put my love on you because I loved you. And um, for God to long suffer with Israel from the time of Abraham until the time of Jesus, you know, you know how long that was? 2,000 years. And he's put up with you for less than that. Okay? But he said, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them. <clears throat> Even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. He's talking about the children now of Joshua. And all, that, all of Joshua's men that fought the battles. Uh, he's talking about they're dead now. They can't fight the battles anymore. And... Uh, the lesson I learned growing up was I like to run to my mama a lot or my sister because she was bigger than me. And um, giving up for me comes pretty easy. So whenever my mouth would get me in trouble with other boys in the neighborhood, I would start running. And I'd run home. And I'd expect my mama to take care of it. And my mama was pretty wise. She got tired of it. And she took me out in the yard one time. She's going to teach me how to fight people. Don't mess with my mama. Okay? She said, you need to pop them back. And it wasn't in me. And so, later on in life, God's teaching me the same thing. Teach me how to fight back instead of give up. Because I give up pretty easy. I give up. I turn it over. I say, God, that's enough. I'm done. I'm out. 
you, <laughs> you have no you have no idea since 1995 how many times I've walked away from this church it's been a lot and God will pull me back and say no you're going to stand and you're going to fight but I don't want to I don't want to I get hurt I'm afraid God said I'm going to teach you I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how to fight. So watch this. I mean, just like that. God zapped that in my mind. I have no idea how to preach this. But anyway, I want you to know, and let's read verse 2 again, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Then he's, verse 3, he's going to name them. Okay, he's going to name them. Namely, he means exactly what it says here. Five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, and the Sidonians, and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. Everybody look up here. How many? Ephesians 6. Turn there. There's correlations and connections and here little, there little, all throughout your Bible. You read it enough, God will start tying knots together. He'll start putting pieces of the puzzle together. He'll start showing you things you never knew before. Four things that God got, four things that God left there. Not that, not that uh, um, Joshua left there, but four things, four groups that God left there. So, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against... Everybody, let's read this verse 12 out loud together. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. How many? Same. It's the same. God is showing you back here in, in Judges chapter 3, that is got you written all over it. He's, you are fighting principalities. You're fighting powers. You're fighting uh, rulers of the darkness of this world and if you are in that darkness right now there are spirits that are ruling over you that have got control of your mind they got control of your heart and they're going to destroy you god is giving you the power to fight them back but you may be like me you want to give up and give in and just let them have it that's my nature i'm i'm bad about it Okay, God's bringing this out of me today, thanks to you. Appreciate it. God's showing me things. God showed me this last night. Our battle is real. And for Trish, she was not fighting for herself. She was not fighting for her life. She was not fighting for her salvation. She was doing it for somebody else. That means the world to her. And she stood. And the devil said, I'm going to take his life. And she said, absolutely not. That is not going to happen. And the devil said, I've already taken it. And she said, but you can't keep it. And God raised that man alive. And I couldn't believe it. Because I was waiting to hear from you. He's dead. Get ready. We're going to do a funeral. Yes, sir. Oh, you're just praising. Okay. Keep going. She fought Philistines. Five lords of the Philistines. You know who the five lords of the Philistines represent? 
There's five of them. They represent death. Five is that number for death. And the Philistines were over the head of Samson. It was meaning they're ruling over him. And Samson killed them all in his death. He's a type of Christ who destroys the powers that are against us in how many books? Count them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The only power that we have with God, see, she rests, she's Jacob. She wrestled with God, and God said, Trish, you need to release me now, let me go. And she said, I'm not releasing you until you bless me. I'm not letting you go until my dad is alive and back on his feet. And sometimes it takes a little boldness out of us. God is trying to push us out in the forefront of the battle to get us to stand up and get us to learn, get us toughened up a little bit to take a stand and say, listen, I've had enough of the devil taking my life and doing whatever he wants with me. I'm sick of it. See, we don't fight until we get mad. And when you push anybody far enough, they're going to stand up and they're going to say, I've had it. I may lose. I may have my life taken. But I'm not going to stand here and let you roll over me. Let me hear God's people say amen. So we know we got a battle going, don't we? We expect to win, don't we? Oh, man. Turn to Revelation 13. Show me what to say, God. Revelation 13. Verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, Upon his horns, ten crowns. Upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Now I want you to look at verse 2. I want you to read it. I want you to think about it. Would you be afraid of any one of these? Who in here does not like snakes and lizards? Raise their hand. Think, when you see the dragon here, think snakes and lizards. Only great big ones. If you think you run at a little bitty lizard like that, think about what one about 30 feet long would do to you. Okay? Now verse 2. The beast I saw was like unto a leopard. That would scare me. That would make me flee. Number 2. His feet were as the feet of a bear. What did you see the other day? Matthew coming down Reynolds Creek Road. Linda, listen to this now. Matthew was coming the back way, Reynolds Creek Road from Sea Highway back toward our house. At night, deer jumping right in front of him all across the road. And then he saw a black bear. And we're supposed to go out in the woods this weekend. Number three, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. How many of you would like to have any part of you inside the mouth of a lion? No. And the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. Now look up here. What do I have here? Who are we going to fight? We're going to fight the beast. Now, get ready. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. See, he got killed, and he got healed again. And he's alive again. Now, see that tree? That tree has been through that cycle repeatedly. It has gone through a life and death cycle. The life comes in the springtime and throughout the summer. So it gets the spring rains, the summer sun... Then it gets the fall rains, and it's preparing 
and it drops its leaves in fall, and this is what we're fixing to see here. It's late this year, but we're fixing to see it. Get ready for it. And then it's going to die. It's going to be dormant and not have leaves and not grow and produce no fruit, no nuts, no apples, nothing is going to come out of this thing for a period of time. And then what's going to happen to it? It's going to come back to life again. That's the cycle. This And the battle that you fought eight weeks ago, two months ago, last week, and you thought, boy, I, I got him this time. I got the old devil, and he's, he's gone now. Amen. His deadly wound's going to get healed. He's going to come back at you. Are you listening? You know who this, you know who this beast is? See, this is what's in my mind. You know who this beast is? Paul calls him the man of sin. Not everybody else's sin. Yours. Stop and think about this for a minute, okay? Do you have cycles, repeated cycles in your life where sin flourishes again? I do. And I am not any different than everybody sitting in this room. Repeated. I get victory. And I thrive in it. And I jump. And I'm happy. And then here it comes again. Do you know what God's doing? Teaching me to fight. In um, verse 4. Look at verse 4. They worship the dragon. This is the verse the Holy Ghost gave me last night. I don't think I got the fullness of it yet. But They worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to do what? Who is able to make war with him? I will. Every time he rises back up, I will fight him. Every time. And I want you to look now. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed me against God to blaspheme. Doesn't that bother you? Does that bother you, Chris? Does that bother you guys when you hear these guys say Jesus Christ, G-O-D, and all this kind of stuff? Does that bother you? That bothers me. And they curse God and they curse Jesus Christ. That bothers me. Okay? Especially now they're adding, they're adding a middle name to Jesus Christ. How many of you heard that one? Don't make me say it. Oh, no, 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 no. It's bad. Jesus mm, Christ. Fill in that blank with your own profanity. That's And that bothers me. I want to pop them. He opened his mouth and blasphemed me against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. Show me the tabernacle of God. And them that dwell in heaven. Verse 7. Look at your Bible. And it was given unto them to make war with who? That's us. And look at the next phrase. And overcome them. Has he not? Has he not overcome you before? When he rises up. And God allows him to overcome you just a little bit. Not completely, not just destroy you, but overcome you a little bit. And he's trying, and what he wants is the cycles to stop. Because maybe, I don't know this, but maybe he knows that every time 
He does, you get just a little bit taller, a little bit stronger, and stand a lot better than you used to. Amen? So I'm going to ask you this morning. Well, power is given to him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. That's three things. And all them that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, there is another place here, and uh, I, it just came into my head here, and uh, you'll have to forgive me if I can't just find it, just boom, 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 just like that. Um, but there is a place where it talks about them who got victory over the beast, and over his mark, and over his name. Okay, if you find that, raise your hand, shout it, whatever. It's in here. There is coming a time, people, that God will finally say, this is enough, you fought enough, you fought the good what? It's a good fight. It's worth fighting. Our daddies are lost, and they're dying and going to hell. And are they not worth fighting for? Our mamas and our sisters and our brothers are lost. And they're dying and going to hell. And the beast, the man of sin, your own stupid sin, wants to make sure that your lost friends and loved ones never see the gospel. You stand and you fight. And you put him down. He'll raise back up. If you read Judges, you'll see it. He'll raise back up, maybe a different form, it's the same beast, same man of sin, same stupid stuff that's in us. And God will give you the victory. And you'll put him down. After a while, he'll come back up. And you're going to have to fight him all over again. Who's with me? Here's what I'm going to ask you this morning. Who's going to fight that beast? Trisha already did. She fought him. She looked him in the eye and said, not today, not now. We need some soldiers on the front line who will stand and say, not on my watch. You know, we need some, we need some policemen and we need some soldiers who will march up and down, who will drive through the neighborhoods at night while we're asleep and say in their minds and their hearts, I'm not going to let the bad guys come in to your house tonight. Not on my watch. We need those guys out there. Amen? And we need some saints who are willing to rise up and take a stand and say boldly to the man of sin, to the beast himself, you can growl, you can overcome me, you can do what you want, but you're not having my daddy. You're not going to have my sister. You're not going to have my children. You're not going to have my grandchildren. You put me down. In fact, where is that? Let me get my notes here. Boy, I'm, I'm something without my notes. Amen? I got notes just like every other preacher. I just show them to you all the time. Micah 7, 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and does what? Riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. At some point, God is going to say, it is enough. And you're finally going to get that victory that you've been battling for, that you've been fighting for. All this time, He's going to give it to you. And He's going to give you victory over the beast, the man of sin, and over everything that He's ever tried to do. But until then, we need some soldiers who will stand up and say, you put me down, I'm going to get back up. And I'm going to fight you again, and I'm not stopping. That's all I got. I'm done. Except to say this.
Who's ready to fight?